Hello, this is Julie from Love's Beginning, and today I wanted to talk about how love supports us through everything. And the interesting thing about it is that we come into these incarnations and we absorb the energy and the energetic patterns of everyone around us. Um, we also bring in some patterns from previous incarnations. Um, what, even when I say the word previous, that's not quite right because it's all happening right now. But the way we can understand it is in a linear way, in the sense of a timeline. So there's a sense of accumulation and we accumulate some of these patterns that are counter to the reality of what we are, which is very simple. It's just love. So we bring some patterns with, in with us, we absorb others, we um, dip deep into forgetfulness. And then we are slated to come back into remembrance, which is what we're doing now. We're remembering the simplicity of who we are, who we all are, and who we always have been. And in that simplicity is the innocence of who we all are, who we always have been, and what we've been doing here. So, um, we can come to see as we remember that love supports all things and will never interfere in our choices. So, what we've been choosing over and over and over again through lifetimes is conflicted will. It's the idea of a self, a separate sense of self that can be harmed and that can harm um, in any situation it comes into, it will see itself as being able to gain or lose from the situation instead of that which cannot gain or lose because it is always whole and complete in every moment. So when we bring the remembrance of that back into daily experience. It's fun to see where our previous assumptions about the power of the physical world collide. Um, I'm speaking slowly because when I'm receiving, it's I receive sometimes slowly. They're kind of giving me the words, past some of the thought processes that are going on. And then there are other times when I just speak casually about my own experience. Um, this is definitely, I'm telling you what I'm hearing. So if you notice those differences, that's, that's why I go kind of in a, a plotting manner because I'm listening to what they're saying. And I, I will rewatch these videos because um, I don't fully get it the first time and or even the second or third sometimes I've, I'll watch them a few times because <laughs> I get what I said or what was told to me and what I relayed a little bit deeper every time okay so let's see <laughs> if I can go back to where I was okay I'm going to go back to just the general sense of conflicted will and, and being in a situation where we believe we have a separate interest. So it, I was saying it can get fun or funny when the awareness of the love that we are, the very simple love that we are, and that identity that we all share, um, when it becomes more and more predominant, stronger and stronger, it can be funny to see the physical world um, uh, with this as the backdrop. You realize all the things you've brought into the world. And I like to say you or I, so we don't forget our responsibility. Um, you might hear various stories about your world and, and, and what has happened in your world. If any of those stories include um, a victim, it's like a story you haven't heard or a story 
they <laughs> hid from you. They is you. It's all part of the game. Um, that story may be very true, but if you pan the camera back, another step. They always tell me, pan the camera back, pan the camera way, way back. Uh, so if you take the camera back, another step. You can see that the story of victimization came about because of the decision for separate and conflicted will. A conflict, a true conflict, um, not true conflict, a, a very real seeming conflict cannot happen in a world um, without the choice for the illusion of separate, conflicted, vulnerable will, otherwise known as free will. <laughs> okay, it's free in a sense. The oneness that we are um, differentiates and expresses itself, but can never be truly separate. But here we pretend we are, and we pretend we're subject to and we'll pretend we're individually capable of, of harming. But really, anytime we present ourselves with the illusion of victimhood, we all did it. That's a difficult one for me to get. Um, so I'm gonna to try to revisit that. Anytime we look at a what appears to be a single act of wrongdoing, we all did it. And here's the sense in which it's true, okay, we have, um, we have some different levels of differentiation. We have the, the individual beings, like human being, and we have um, the soul level. So maybe one soul has experienced um, different lifetimes, and we have um, the levels that way. And... Uh, I don't fully understand this. <laughs> I can't explain it in any minute detail, but I do know there are the different levels there. Okay, how did all of us do everything? Because there's only one of us. And the one of us is play acting. And part of the experimentation here, um, or the decision, here was was the desire to see could we express experience an opposite to what actually is would it be possible to experience what isn't and this is why we have our conflicted and separate sense of will we value what we think of as independence um, originality, um, differences amongst us. And we think if, if we were to lose the fear and the pain that makes what we call free will possible, that life would be boring. But we forget that differentiation, variety, um, is not, it's not conflicted, conflicted with harmony. You, you can have differentiation within harmony if we, and that's what we're here to do. We're here to remember who we are and to bring harmony back into our experience through alignment with the one will. The one will is expressed in differentiation. And so it's not a threat, but the ego sees it as a threat. The ego sees it as its destruction. Um, the ego sees it as death. Well, <laughs> there is no death, but we have created an egoic death, physical death experience for ourselves that we all go through here. The body is temporary and um, the body is encompassed within all of that which we are. 
It, it comes, it goes. Um, but we are so much more than it. We are so much bigger than it. So, where was I going with this? So we gave ourself, ourselves the egoic experience of death. The ego suggests fear to us. It's, we could say the ego is terrified, but the ego is not real, okay? The ego suggests thoughts to love, which is what we are. In differentiation, we're all these different beings. And the ego is like the computer program we put in place to have and sustain this experience of separate and conflicted will. And it makes suggestions to us as love. We'll never stop being love. That's all we are throughout the day. If you don't like being love, you could be harmony. You could be flow. You could be, <laughs> pick a word. <laughs> and um, you, you can get the gist of it. You can feel it. There are only two things you can feel. You can feel that which um, we invented in order to work with and support the ego to make this experience of separate will possible. And that is fear or pain. Or you can feel love. And there are a million differentiations of those two things or words that might describe a fluctuation between those two states. But that's really all you're capable of feeling. You can either feel the energy you put in place to have the experience of separate and conflicted will, or you can feel the energy that you truly are. You can feel the energy of the opposite that you tried to put in place that could never predominate because it's not actually real, or you can feel the real thing. Those are the only two options there. So it becomes very, very simple. And we're here to bring harmony back into our daily experience, back into our expression with all others. And we do it very, very simply. We do it by remembering that we are love. Everybody else is love. Love is in every situation. Love is in um, every happening during our day. And it's up to us to notice it, to find it. And when it feels like it's not love, we're very lucky because we're running into a block that we ourselves put in place to construct this experience of separate and conflicted will. And so once we run into it, we can realize what's happening, see through it, settle into our true identity, invite the energy of love into it, and then whatever speech or actions become necessary in meeting this energy that we put in place, um, we just know very simply what to say and what to do. So it's just like a remembrance that grows and grows and grows. Um, it seems complex at first because there is so much that is believable about the very complex experience we've put in place for ourselves so much about the physical world that seems to rule us. Um, so at first it seems so complex, but when you realize that everything in the illusion we made in order to try to experience the opposite of what actually is, everything within it, every single thing can be um, put into the service of healing and remembrance. And so when we do that, everything that happens is serving us. It's helping us clear a block. It's helping us face a fear that we decided to believe. We decided as love to believe in a sense of threat, to believe in a sense of calamity. And that spread outward from what we perceived as ourselves. Um, and so everything we're seeing in this world, we projected out of that fear that we used to keep on choosing separate and conflicted will. So if we just remember 
it's up to me. I choose. I choose. And I, as love, which includes you, have only one will. And it is very simple. And um, as the human aspect, I might not know exactly what it is. But if I just settle down into the remembrance, I know what to do and say next. And it feels very good because we are, we can feel that harmony. We can feel that homecoming. We can feel the reality of our true identity, which um, feels very different than the scrambling uh, or anxiety of our identity um, as the separate will, as the the separate entity that that has to struggle or that has to prove something. Um, do I have anything more here? I think that's it. It's just the idea of um, carrying choice throughout the day and that the idea of remembrance is very, very simple. So when we find things getting complex, um, we can turn all the complexity over to the simplicity of healing. And those ideas, words, actions that we need will come to us very easily. If that's not happening for us yet, um, we just have to be willing to face what seems very dense and impenetrable and complex and just be very steady about remembering that is our choice. Um, and, and we will break through. We will break through. Every time each one of us breaks through, we're sharing this with all the rest of it, us that are focused on breaking through too. So our collective energy is very helpful to all of us. And it's going in the direction of remembrance. So thank you for all the work you're doing. I appreciate it.